Hi, and welcome to the Reiki from the Farm podcast brought to you by me, Pam Allen LeBlanc from Hidden Brook Farm. I am a scientist, a businesswoman, and a licensed Reiki master teacher with the International Center for Reiki Training. Each week in this podcast, you'll be entertained as you learn about a wide variety of relevant Reiki topics, helping you become a more knowledgeable and effective Reiki practitioner. We caution you, though, this podcast may also dramatically improve your life, and we are so happy that you're here. Good morning, everyone. And I say good morning because I came out here at sunrise because I wanted you to see the beautiful Sedona cliffs at sunrise. For those of you listening, I will put a YouTube link in the podcast in case you would like to check out some of the gorgeous red rocks. We're very fortunate to be surrounded by them here uh, where I'm staying, Karen Harrison and I at the Um, beautiful Vista Ridge uh, condos in Sedona. We're just hanging out and doing some hiking and taking a little downtime before we go over to the retreat for the long Labor Day weekend. I shared the energy of Sedona with you through the podcast last year, and that was just so special that I decided I wanted to do it again. So on this week's podcast, that's where we are. We are in Sedona and bringing you the energy of the red rocks, the vortexes, all the beautiful history of this unique place. Before we begin, I just want to let you know that later this month, we have some animal Reiki classes in Campobello. And sometimes the whales join us for that class. We see them right out the window as we are doing animal Reiki, or sometimes at the restaurant, they come and visit while we have our dinners on the patio. So if you would like to join us, please do come. The highest tides in the world exist on that beautiful island. It's also the summer home of Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt, and I'd just love to have you join us. I also wanted to let you know that September 11th, we have a course on manifesting prosperity. That's in the evening from 6 to 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. If you have any trouble at all uh, accepting money, charging money for doing Reiki, receiving at all in any area of your life, not just financially, although financial will be a big thrust of it because it is something Reiki practitioners have difficulty with. But if you have trouble manifesting prosperity in any area of your life, and particularly financial prosperity, we're going to help you uncover what the blocks are, really understand the dynamics of that, and move through it so that you can be successful in your Reiki practice or in your life, whatever you choose. It's something that I had to really struggle to work through, accepting money for doing Reiki sessions and for my Reiki practice. And so it's something that I'd like to help others with. So we'd love to have you join us the evening of September 11th. If that's an issue for you, you will be receiving a recording. So even if you can't get there in person, it might be valuable and worthwhile to join us for that three and a half hours that could really dramatically change your life. The following week, September 18th, we have a course, Dream It, Do It, Goal Setting for Reiki Practitioners. One of the things that I've been really good at, and my daughter pointed it out, is, Mom, you always accomplish your goals. How do you do that? And I had to think about it. And I also, as I designed this course with my daughter, I realized that it's not just business goals. You really have to have balance in your goals. That's something I learned a a long time ago, that I always have goals with my family, goals with my health with my personal life with my and so there's some pillars and there's some ways that you go about accomplishing goals some of the bigger goals are how do you get a podcast out every week how do you write a book how do you become a licensed reiki master teacher um how do you 
run a successful business, a farm, a Reiki business, all of those things. So whatever your goals are, professional, personal, and so on, I'd love to give you some insight into kind of a system that I've cobbled together that I invoke a lot of Reiki in that works for me. And so please join us September 18th if that is where you're at um, in your life and with your business. And then finally, if you are just getting started with a Reiki business or any business, we have a course October 2nd, 9th, and 16th, three evenings, three consecutive evenings, uh, three consecutive Mondays, sorry, empowered beginnings, just going through um, the nuts and bolts and then helping you through the obstacles, the business skills you'll need. We just want to save you in these courses some time and money because my daughter and I both run successful businesses and we know what is involved in that. And some of the things that we've learned took us a long time. I always say that it took me about nine years to learn this, but I think if you have an hour, I can teach it to you. So join us for that. Last but not least, we have some classes coming up October 16th to 22nd, Reiki 1 and 2, Masters, Animal 1 and 2, and then a Karuna Reiki class in the evenings of October 30th through November 2nd. That's evenings in North America, mornings in Australia and Asia. Love to have you join us if you can. So this weekend is the International Reiki Retreat, the ICRT Reiki Retreat. I'm presenting on how to incorporate more Reiki in your daily life and also in your career, whatever that may be. Would love to have you join us. Um, please know that you can join these Reiki retreats both online and in person. It is one of the requirements of becoming a licensed Reiki master teacher if that's on your bucket list. So we will be having an LRMT meeting at the retreat, hopefully meeting new people who are interested in developing themselves through Reiki, through our very in-depth, comprehensive LRMT program, but it's always amazing when all of these Reiki people with all of their vast experience, all of the love in their hearts come together. Last night, we all gathered at William's home. This morning, William is making us oatmeal before we go hiking. He actually didn't like the way that I make oatmeal. I told him, I challenged him that, okay, then I'd like to see how you make oatmeal. He's making us oatmeal this morning for our breakfast before we go hiking. We have some meetings this afternoon with the other LRMTs, and then it's on to the retreat. Getting back to you and this energy, I just thought I'd give you a little update because this retreat is so much fun. Please plan to join us Labor Day weekend next year if you can, either in person or online. It's nicer to see you in person, but I know that's not always possible. So we'd just love to see you here. Um, getting back to you, what is so special about Sedona? I know I've heard from a lot of you. This is on your bucket list. You would like to come here. I highly recommend it. It's a visual feast for your eyes. When you drive through, I forget the name of the canyon, getting here, or if you come through from Flagstaff like we did yesterday, we did get to the Grand Canyon. I was thinking about you all as we were at the vastness of the Grand Canyon. And I really felt into, do I take them to the Grand Canyon or do they give them the vortex energy? And I, I heard you wanted the vortex energy today. What is so special about Sedona, this place? It's just known for the energy here. As soon as you get here, you feel incredibly connected to the earth. There are vortexes all around you. There are striking red rocks. These vortexes are mystical. If you are an energetically sensitive person, and if you're listening to this podcast, you probably are, you'll feel it. You will feel the energy of the earth just rising through you in a most grounded, comfortable way. People think that this place is one of the most spiritually charged locations in the world. And I've had the privilege of traveling to a few really spiritually charged locations. And I have to agree, there's something really special about this place. That's probably why they're 
so many, so much new age shops here, beautiful organic vegan meals everywhere, crystal shops, psychic readings, massages, and just, it's beautiful. That's all I can say. But a little bit of history about this region, because I always like to understand that. This region has long been considered sacred by the Native American tribes like the Navajo, Hopi, Yavapai, and Apache. To me, this place feels a lot like Uluru, but maybe even a slightly different frequency, but just very special. Our Native American cousins performed ceremonies and rituals here, drawing on the energy of this place. The first European settlers arrived here in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. And for those of you watching the video, the sun is starting to strike the beautiful red rocks behind me now. And now it's really a tourist town known for arts and spiritual retreats. And it has maintained respect for the rich history and sacredness of the land. I had a a pack of coyotes outside my window who decided to celebrate and wake me up around two or three this morning. It's really incredible. But the energy here has this spiritual magnetism. People feel a deep sense of peace, rejuvenation, heightened spiritual awareness here. Some people find it's because of the concentrated energy of the land, this spiritual magnetism that's here. It's often described as a healing place. People who are sensitive to energy can feel warmth, tingling, a feeling of coming home here. Geologically, though, it's a really significant place as well. From the Grand Canyon to the rocks of Sedona, there are layers of sandstone infused with iron. This oxidizes. This is why they're so red. These formations took millions of years to create and were shaped by nature into inspiring and breathtaking cliffs, spires, and mesas. On the Grand Canyon, some of the rocks at the bottom of the canyon have been dated to over 2 billion years old. These red rocks are felt to amplify the energy, making our spiritual experiences here more profound. And I hope you're going to feel that in our podcast today. I think you are. During sunrise and sunsets, they're even more particularly striking. And I think that you can notice that today. That's why I wanted to get out here at sunrise for you. They're powerfully seem to connect us to the earth and and that's what they do beautiful there's hiking trails everywhere here i just love to hike in this region we hear about vortexes in sedona though but what is a vortex really and i've had that question so you must have had that question too it's thought to be a concentrated area of energy rising from the earth And while the whole of Sedona is considered to be a vortex, there are specific sites where the energy is believed to be the strongest. Now, that said, I've traveled to a lot of the vortexes that are on the maps, but I've also felt vortexes elsewhere. And a lot of other spiritually sensitive people tell me the same thing. There are different types of vortexes here. Some of them are believed to have a more feminine or introspective energy that's great for meditation, reflection. Others have a more masculine, extroverted energy, which really brings in strong feelings and insights. And then there's also vortexes that are felt to be very balanced. And these bring everything into harmony. This vortex here that I am in is a very balanced, although perhaps slightly more feminine vortex. However, we are going to be tapping into all of the different vortexes today in our meditation. So you choose the energy that is that you need right now. And maybe when you listen to this meditation another time, you might choose a different energy. 
Um, the idea is that by tapping into this energy, you might feel more inspired, recharged, and deeply at peace. And this is, I think, the perfect time of year to do that. Even though we haven't yet hit the equinox, we really are shifting with schools going back into um, session in North America, in the Northern Hemisphere. We really are shifting from that more relaxed, playful summer energy into a more serious, okay, it's time to get back to it and get back to learning. My daughter actually had orientation for her MBA this morning, and my other daughter is participating in some of the preschool activities. They begin their schooling early next week, right after Labor Day, but right now they're doing orientation and some of the pre-meeting people, and there's an excitement about that. It's uh, palpable. I'm really excited for both of them. And even though I haven't gone back to school in September for a number of years now, you can still feel it. So this is a really great time to tap into being inspired, recharged, deeply at peace. You might notice in our meditation some sensations like tingling in your skin, a vibration under your feet. You might have spiritual or emotional revelations. That's common in this energy. This space is so much more than just a beautiful destination. It's a place where nature and spirit co converge. And William calls this feeling the spirit of the earth. And I'm probably going to go hiking with William and Karen Harrison a little bit later on. I feel very blessed to have these friends in my life who are so spiritually experienced and whose energy is so beautiful to be around in this beautiful energy. So this gives us a chance, this spirit of the earth, this natural and spiritual convergence to reconnect with ourselves, with the world around us, whether it's the geographical or geological wonders, the history, the spiritual energy, I hope this is a transformative experience for you today. And I'm so glad that you're here. Welcome to Sedona. So I'm just going to invite you now to join me in meditation, just remembering that this is your personal journey. So no matter where I guide you, if you're guided to go off into a different direction, follow that. That is the Reiki energy bringing you where you need to go. Just let the imagery and sensations guide you. Trust the process. Connect with the divine energies, both of the mesmerizing beauty and energy of Sedona, and also this is a holy fire Reiki energy um, meditation today. So whether you have holy fire or not, I'm going to be sending you holy fire energy, so I'd really like you to feel into that, tap into that today. It's not better than Yasui energy, but it's a, di a, a beautiful synergy that is created when we connect holy fire with Yasui. So go ahead and close your eyes if you're able. Bring your hands into Gasho activating your own Reiki energy as you imagine the beautiful red rocks of Sedona standing tall against the brilliant blue sky. The golden hues of the sun paints the landscape in shades of amber, ochre, and crimson. Activate your Reiki energy now bringing in your symbols, seeing the energy flow from the divine energy of the earth and the divine energy of the heavens to in front of your hands, through your hands, and into your heart, the gift of love. Seeing your symbols flow into your body on your breath, all around you and the divine animal kingdom is all around you and the brothers and sisters of the light those enlightened beings who are 
assisting us in our daily life. We invite the assistance of these Divine Ones, even and especially when we forget to ask. Place your hands comfortably on your body now, giving yourself Reiki as you imagine the beautiful red rocks of Sedona, standing tall against an azure sky. Feeling the solid ground beneath you as the rich red earth pulsates with energy, with life. You can feel the pulsations in your feet. Just allow your feet to sink in to the earth, grounding you, connecting you to the heart of the Divine Mother, Mother Earth. Imagine a beautiful flame, pure and bright, rising from your heart center. This is holy fire, a divine energy that purifies, heals, and empowers. Let it grow, expand. Allow it to fill your entire being with warmth and light. And then imagine spirals of energy emanating from the red rocks that surround you. These are Sedona's famous vortexes, swirling centers of energy that resonate with the very core of your being. Feel them drawing you in and choose the vortex that speaks the most to you. Allow it to align with the holy fire energy that exists within you. And as the holy fire and Sedona's vortex energies intertwine like strands of DNA, feel them balance and harmonize within you. The fiery passion of Reiki combined with the grounding energy of the vortexes creates a sacred dance now of healing and empowerment. Let's spend a few moments simply being, breathing in the crisp desert air. It's sunrise, it's not that hot yet. Feeling the play of the energies and absorbing the healing essence of this spiritual union the energy of holy fire and of the vortexes is guiding you now to whatever you need in your life in this moment in time. I invite you to allow the energies to guide you. And we'll remain here for some time.
And as the sun moves higher overhead, and as this meditation comes to a close, we express our gratitude to Holy Fire, to the sacred land of Sedona, and to yourself for this journey that you're on, light bringer creating wellness in the world today. Just for today, I will not worry, I will not anger. I will be devoted to my work. I will be kind and I will be grateful. Slowly bring your awareness back to the present moment, bringing this energy back with you, carrying with you the blessings and energies of our time together in Sedona. I am so happy that you could join me in Sedona today at the sunrise, the beautiful red rocks behind us. And I want to take a moment to thank you for being the bright light that you are in the world today. Blessings be. Namaste.